Bang, bang, bang. The same three words? <laughs> right. well, well, it's an interesting choice. America. America. Let me tell you something, America. <laughs> Ow. Is it warm in here? Is it warm? Yeah. You people got me hot. I'm Tank. I'm Tank <laughs> the Beggars, a poet and then a song chaser. Yes. I'm Merrill. I play keys for Tank and the Beggars. My name is Josh. I play drums and I get to have fun creating music with these guys sometimes as an MD. Hey, I'm Albert. I play saxophone and flute. I'm Norman. I play keys and a few other things. You got to do keys. I'm looking at the microphone like, hey. Don't <laughs> The last time we came to Chicago, it was a snowstorm, and there were about uh, three people there. Nick Fabulous. And uh, two of them were was a poet that I knew um, and her partner. So the fact that you come back a year or two later and it's a sold out show, and you know somebody's out there, they're gonna sing along with you, and they're not just gonna know my name, they're gonna scream out all of their names. Mm -hmm. And it's like the dopest change, because we've been doing this so long. And it's always been at least one or two people that's there. You know, we was happy for them, and we was happy to rock with them no matter what. So it's just kind of amazing the NPR opened this door where there's actually people waiting for you when you open it, you know? That's, that's like the, the coolest change. Before it was cool. It was definitely cool, and we were doing it, and we'd be doing it regardless because it's all we're equipped to do. Uh, pretty much, yeah, we're not, can't cook. <laughs> I can't you know, cook, so uh, tank can't clean. This is pretty much it for us. <laughs> this is the end of the road, so we're really happy it's working out. <laughs> so, but after the NPR thing, you know, it just, I mean, it's, it's crazy to, I don't, I still don't believe that when people come out and there's no amount of thanks or hugging or handshaking that can express, like when, when people come out and are like singing the songs and, and, and know you and like, like the art you've created, there's, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Always fighting in my life is way their way. I've been scared to fly. Cause I might calm down. I think I'm ready now. Getting back in line. When I was a little girl, um, it was my grandparents' 50th wedding anniversary and they would bring me and I would, uh, I did a poem for them and I screwed it up so bad. You know, I just had to keep looking at the people even though I was rehearsing it every night. But um, my grandmother must have saw something in me because she brought me around to every single church after that. And I would perform right before my grandfather would preach and our uh, children would be laughing at me, you know, continuously. But I just knew that I was doing something right. I was like, man, y'all should just watch me do this because my grandmama brought me here and, uh, See, man. It's all right. That's support, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy right there, you know? I think it's the God factor. I really do. You know, um, it's bigger than us. You know, we ain't, ain't none of us really necessarily put this together. And, you know, we all, everybody writes songs. All kind of artists write songs, even artists that we admire. But we touching people on a different kind of level. You know, you look at the reaction these adults are giving at the end of a show. It's like, wait, you was that open to this? And it got you there? It's like, whoa, okay. I know we could do that. We can't though. Yeah. It's crazy. It's kind of like what people say, you can't, you know, tell the man you love how you feel for probably 20 some years, but you meet a stranger at the bus stop and tell him your life. You know, so I'm always in a room full of strangers. Mm -hmm. But uh, we just feel so connected. I, when I see pretty, when I see a, pretty black girl in the audience, I just, you know, I can't stop looking at her. Or a black dude getting free, or even freaking a white girl just, just dancing, you know, and actually on rhythm. Mm. I'm proud of her. <laughs> Can I see everybody?
Everybody's cell phone light in the air one time. Your cell phone lights, let's make like a thousand fireflies. Like, touching each one. Expressing yourself so vividly and brightly that they only see you coming. Your head light heart, your head beam heart. Gotta see you coming. A lot of those special little moments, I think we love to surprise each other too, because especially if you're doing the same show, you we keep each other on our toes, keep each other excited. I don't know how that solo is going to sound, you know? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, just as the crowd wants to be inspired, encouraged, and touched, we want to feel the same thing. We have to. We have to uh, feel fired up about what we're doing. How did you guys begin to kind of trust each other and be um, open enough to be vulnerable when creating and doing that process? <laughs> A lot of time together. Yeah, a lot, Three months a lot of in a two-bedroom flat in London. Yes, <laughs> how, how did you all get to London? What was, what was that story? It's a long swim. We, we saved up our money. And, um, <laughs> to get a boat. We got a little boat. The boat got a hole in it, so we ended up catching a flight. We actually had another member. We had to use that member to plug the hole. <laughs> <laughs> we said, we said, we sold these backyard parties and it was so dope. Um, we called them taking the Baker's Backyard Hangout. Well, we just opened up our rehearsal space to all our family and friends and fans. And everybody paid the dough. We'd get a local band to perform every month to come. And uh, it started to become a thing. And it's how we, in every show, we put money to the side and we saved up to go live out there for like for like three months. And mm. with with also being together and trusting each other, it's also, um, we used to rehearse like and have sheds like every Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And that's when you just build up this, you're gonna go here, okay, I'm about to go there. And you just get a feel for each, each other's, you know, natural flow of um, how each other play. Mm. So yeah, it was, it was a couple of things leading up to that, that mountain. We yeah. still are in the process of, you know, just All listening to each other, you know, where you going. Yeah. Yo, he's very, very disciplined, man. This guy right here, Albert, is very, very disciplined. This dude will practice a flute at 2.30 in the morning and a sax at 3.30. <laughs> he has to do flute before sax, Because he has to do them both. And that's getting off the road. And it's like, yeah, we're about to go to sleep. Yeah, all right, good night. And then we're like, Albert. All right. <laughs> Tank is freakishly creative with words. You could be in a normal conversation with her, and it sounds like she's reciting the poem to you or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, well, Josh is not only our drummer, I don't know if anybody mentioned the fact that he's our MD as well, and um, full of amazing ideas. That's what you guys are hearing most of the time. Stuff that he kind of put together. And it's all here, you know, he don't necessarily play keys, he's a drummer, but he'll hum the hell out of a part to you. <laughs> and he'll put it all together. And that's really what it takes. And that's why I think we are appreciated the way we are, because of his ability to make it cohesive. Norman is a good man, capital M. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like father, man, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I have some fun, man. Yeah. I give my horns up. Back up. Let's bang. <laughs> bang, bang, yeah. bang. No. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Look, she's about to do it again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have to.
to go around. 